PANS and PANDAS are acronyms describing a set of symptoms that we will see in children. PANS stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Syndrome. PANDAS stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disease Associated with Strep. So PANDAS actually was found first back in 1998 is when it was first documented. There was a case of a child who developed some sudden onset of neuro neuropsychiatric symptoms that started after having an infection with strep throat. These symptoms were abrupt. They came on suddenly. It was as if the child had changed overnight. Um, and we, we saw things like anger and rage and OCD and other things that just didn't quite make sense. And they came on so suddenly, um, it was hard to figure out what was going on. So that, that association was first seen back in 1998. Now in 2010, there's, that's, that's when we have seen what's called PANS, which basically it's, it's the same thing as PANDAS except for it's broader, meaning that pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric syndrome can be associated with many other things besides strep throat. This is something that we've also found out over the years is that it's not just strep that can cause this, it's anything that can trigger this autoimmune dysfunction. So in, in our case, in at New Hope, we see a lot of kids with Lyme disease and other tick-borne disease and co-infections. And we certainly see a lot of kids with PANS. It is a very common manifestation of Lyme disease in children. And I don't know that there's a great research study to prove this, but clinically we've seen this a lot, especially in cases where kids have what we believe is congenital Lyme meaning that they likely got the, the bacteria while in utero from a mom who already had Lyme disease. So PANS and PANDAS, it can be quite a, quite a abrupt and, and disrupting phenomenon to experience when you have a child that one day seems to be perfectly normal and the next day is completely different. Um, I can just give you a little bit of my personal background and, and kind of where um, I first learned about this was with one of my children. So some of you may know that uh, part of my background in treating Lyme disease is that uh, my wife has Lyme and that's really what started our path down finding out more about chronic Lyme and really what it all entails. And we think that she likely got it when she was in her teenage years. We don't know for sure, but that's when symptoms started and she definitely had a lot of exposure to ticks at that time. So fast forward and we have a child who is about seven years old, eight years old. And there was one day where he seemed to be just like his normal self. And the next day where he was quite different, where all of a sudden he became quite angry and, and was just inconsolable and just beyond reasoning. You know, there was, there's sometimes where you can reason with kids, I mean, little times where you can reason with kids, but when you can, sometimes they'll actually listen. Sometimes if you can put a big enough um, incentive out there, they, you can actually get a kid to settle down if they're, if they're having a, um, a fit or something like that. But this was different. This was like, no matter what we did, nothing was gonna stop this particular um, process. And so it almost just kind of had to ride itself out that day. Well, going forward from there, other things started developing. There were um, specific things that he became, I wouldn't say scared, but he had aversions to where he couldn't do certain things because of an experience that he had. Um, for instance, one of the things that, uh, that happened is he had what we look back now and see was actually a panic attack during the middle of a haircut. And because of that, he decided from then on out, he wouldn't cut his hair. Well, it wasn't the biggest deal in the world, but you know, over time we eventually were gonna to have to cut the kid's hair. Um, but there were other things that, that started to become more intrusive. And so that's really where we started learning more and I started learning more about what, it, what this is, what PANS is. And so in our practice, when we see kids that have these types of symptoms, we, we can automatically kind of know what's going on here, especially when we see a kid with Lyme that's developed these neuropsychiatric symptoms. 
it's actually a lot more common than we know. And, and there can be, again, many other triggers. Strep was just the first one that was found. Lyme is just another one of those things. There can be environmental triggers, emotional triggers. There's lots of things that can cause this. So that's the, um, one of the things about this is that it's something that's, that's, again, I think way more widespread than we really know. And it's, it's an autoimmune process. And so autoimmune essentially means that your body's immune system is attacking itself. And, and this is generally a result of things such as inflammation. Um, we think about inflammation in the brain and the microglial cells of the brain as, as a big part of what causes um, psychiatric symptoms in patients with Lyme disease. And, and this is really no different, I think, in cases with PANS and PANDAS that we're seeing this inflammation in the brain that's causing these symptoms. So there's, there's physical inflammation and autoimmune dysfunction going on here that's causing this. Um, so when you're thinking about this and what do you do for it, you know, there's, there's a couple of things that you have to be thinking about. Number one is you want to make sure that whatever the underlying issue is, is you treat that. So if it's an infection, you got to treat the infection. That's first and foremost. And sometimes that's enough. Other times you have to do more to decrease the inflammation. And there have been studies actually on this where they've shown um, kids that uh, receive for instance, a, a burst of steroid treatment, for instance, steroids, a, a powerful anti-inflammatory and an immunosuppressant. So you can really sometimes calm down these, these symptoms with that. The only problem is, is that if the underlying cause is a chronic infection like Lyme disease, well, now you're adding this immunosuppressant on top of that. Um, it may not necessarily be the best long-term option. Um, sometimes there's been thoughts and, and experiences that non-steroidal anti-inflammatories may be helpful. Uh, there are herbal and other more natural anti-inflammatories that can be helpful. There are treatments such as PEMF, um, pulsive electromagnetic field therapy, that can decrease inflammation. And I've personally seen this be very successful for, for my, my son. Um, so this is something that, uh, that's another option here too. So you, you treat the infection, you treat the underlying cause, whatever it is, you treat the inflammation, and then you support whatever else is going on going forward. And, and sometimes with these kind of things, there can be longer lasting outcomes from this, um, whether that be issues with anxiety, OCD, depression, panic. Um, so if there are other treatment modalities that need to be explored, such as, such as counseling, um, psychotherapy, uh, even medication sometimes will, will be important in these cases. So really just trying to make sure that we're tackling all the different aspects of it. So Today, I just wanted to give a little bit of information on that. So PANS and PANDAS, uh, two very real and quite common psychiatric symptoms that we see with kids um, that follow some of these infections and important to recognize and important to make sure that we're treating both the underlying cause and the inflammation of an autoimmune dysfunction that happens as a result of this.